Welcome back, if I can say that, to the old Cron. Here we are at the offices that you, Dave Bowden, used to work at. Yes, I did. Yeah. And we've come here for a, a rare revisit to reacquaint you, if needed, with somewhere that you worked. Just after Easter 1963. I left school and uh, came to work here as a as a reader's copy holder. Office there, which is the other half of William Hill. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, at the back was um, the, the foundry on the ground floor um, where Peter Leach used to work. And he used to make the flongs, uh, in other words, printing plates. Uh, and up there, I believe it was that second one. That's where Ray Van Hamley used to sit the editor. Um, I had calls to go up there a couple of times. To be told off? No, uh, to um, to check some copy from from a reporter. What's copy? Copy. What is copy? Well, it's what the reporters used to scroll on. A A5 landscape. They write in shorthand, you know, and uh, occasionally get the odd query and. Um, it, if the sub editor's not there, then then the editor would have a look at it. He'd be able to translate it for you. Well, everything used to be sub edited once once it came in from the street, if if you see what I mean. Um, so the reporter would give the sub editor a copy, he'd sub it, and then any, anything serious like libel or, or, or anything like that, uh, they, they'd have people have a look at it. So you didn't get told off by the editor? No. It no. wasn't his job. He had people under him, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So how old were you when you started here? Fifteen. Straight from school? Yeah, straight from school, yeah. Who got you the job here? Um, my cousin Norman. Nobby Richmond. Yeah. I know that name. Yeah. Because he'd been here, he did his apprenticeship here. Um, and he got called away to the National Service did his national service and then came back in the middle of his apprenticeship and did the rest of the years. So he was quite late to finish his apprenticeship because of the national service in between. Uh, and then I suppose he would have been about 28 then, I suppose. When Still I, young. When I started working here. He always looks permanently old in the photographs. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, he, he, he was a member of the Chelmsford Amateur Wrestling Club, and uh, he was very good, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever wrestle with him? No, we used to go to all the, um, to all the shows and that. I mean, in every park, in, in every town in Essex, there would be a wrestling match on, or a hall. Um, yeah, quite enjoyable, that. So you started at 15, and what were you, what was your title? Well, I was a, a, a reader's copy holder. So you held copy in your hand? Yeah, that's right, yeah. You know, the copy from the reporter would come to, would come to us after the sub-editor and then look at it. I would read from the copy to the reader, um, and he'd just mark up the proof that had been, uh, that had been proofed uh, for reading, um, and then we'd, we'd send it back down to the uh, to the linotype room to have it corrected. And what's a linotype? Uh, uh, it's a two and a half uh, machine made of uh, cast metal with hundreds of moving parts. So it's a giant typewriter. A giant typewriter, but the keyboard wasn't like a normal typewriter. It was bigger. It was 90 keys. Wow. More than the alphabet. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you had, you had figures, punctuation on it as well, lowercase and uppercase, so 90 keys. And any extraneous sorts would be picked out from the, uh, from a side, a side rail. Uh, called, what were they called? Yeah, it was called the extraneous 
So it's like, oh, um, oh, I've forgotten it. It's a long time since I worked on now. But, uh, so you yeah. took it to the lino typist? Yeah, and then they'd, they'd set the lines to, and they'd give it to the com compositors to, to drop in on the galley right. and then proof it again. So, so the lino so typists were punching out hot metal into typefaces going right back to William Caxton. Well, yeah, yeah, but not single letters in, in lines. That's why they're called line of type, right. line of type, right. and inter type, into type. See, <laughs> the line of types were English and inter types were American. Um, Which were better? Inter type, by far. Why? Yeah. Um, the magazines were lighter. Um, the line of type magazines invariably were made of brass. And then when you've got them full of brass as well, hell of a job to get them on, uh, loaded onto the machine. Um, you do, you use one knee to support you as you were lifting them up. But um, you were a 15 year old and... Yeah, well I wasn't working in intertype then. You, you couldn't work a machine of any sort, apart from the Ludlow um, and maybe the saw in the comp room until you were 18. Or until you completed yeah, when, when the apprenticeship? No, no, no. You'd only be halfway through your apprenticeship then. Um, for a printing machine or anything to do with the printing side of it or the typesetting side of it, you had to be 18 to work any of those machines, you know. It was a real closed shop industry, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's Very right. tightly yeah. controlled, everyone's job known to that person. Yeah. Nobody dared stray over their assigned job. No, that's right. Yeah. You started at 15 thanks to Nobby Richmond. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he had a word with Ralph, Ralph Tyrrell. And, uh, and, and then uh, he said, there's a job at the Chronicle if you want one. That was one of my, that was one of my um, best subjects at school was English. So. Was it really? English and metalwork. You could spell that? Cool, yeah. English, English metal work and music, and music, and music, and my three subjects. I failed miserably at maths because I, I needed specs and I didn't know, and I couldn't see the board, he was sitting right at the front. Oh, Blessing in disguise. Yeah, one, one of the teachers gave me a letter and said, give that to your father. And it said, I, I believe your son is in need of spectacles. <laughs> Oh dear. And, and when I got them and put them on... The world opened it, up? It did, indeed. Right. Yeah. So well, you were here at 15 and you stayed on for how, how many years? Oh, well, the thing was, uh, as they took on more publications, um, they em employed a couple more readers, um, and of course they wanted copy holders, so I, I was getting... I, I spent a while in, in the reading box with Ted Johnson. And on certain days, they'd, they'd bring me down to the composing room you know, um, to learn composing. <laughs> um, and then, before I knew it, I'm back in the reading box. So I, I, I said to Ralph, I mean, no animosity at all. I said to Ralph, look, I want to do an apprenticeship as a comp. And I, I'd already been there a year, and there was no mention of an apprenticeship. So. So I, I, uh, I looked around the printers around the town and I ended up going to C.W. Paul and finished an apprentice there, an apprenticeship there. What did they print? Um, jobbing, jobbing work. And we had, um, we had some top secret work there as well. The, uh, one of them was the, um, the government white paper for Stansted Airport. And we used to do the uh, trademarks and copyrights um, from the High Court, they, they'd, uh, they'd determine who was in the right, who was in the wrong. Not the sort of job they'd give to a newspaper print office, is it? No, no. And we used to do the Borough Minutes for Chelmsford. All top secret. Yeah, and sometimes we used to do um, new Borough Minutes as well. Because um, the, the man that owned T.W. Paul, uh, Mr. Ellis, he also owned Ellis in uh, Chinford. 
so we used to get uh, quite a lot of East London work as well. Look, you've spotted yes, that. Yes, so that would be one of those... Uh, it would be one of these, possibly that one or that one, looking out of, out of that room uh, across the road to the Saracens. Right. I can't see those. Um, where are they? They are up there. That's how I spotted it. It's those windows that gives it away. Yes, it is, yeah. That's the light. Well, that's that one. The light is on in the basement, but the door There's no one at home. <laughs> firmly locked at the old crop. This, this, if I'm not mistaken, is where Peter Leach used to work. Um, right at the other end, in that side door on the left. That, that was a green door. It was a green door green painted door, it had about 200 coats on it. So what happened in there? What happened well, in the basement? Well, Peter used to um, uh, milk the ingots to feed the endotypes, um, the inotypes and the ladlow, and, um, and he'd make um, spacing of all sorts, leads, um, six point pipers, um, for use in the comp room. Okay. Um, and he'd be there, you'd have to walk past him to get into the works. But our entrance... It was, was it as dirty as that back then? It, it wasn't very clean, I tell you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's where Peter used to make the flames, I believe, which would have been over here. Right. There was a machine over there where, where he... like that. Those funny shaped flames. Right, where he pressed the flame into the plate. Uh, into the type, so okay. to, to make to make now the that's okay. a very evocative picture. Yeah. Do you recognise that old boy? No, it's very dark. Jeez. Yeah. Now that looks like the front office. Are we? Am I right? It, it could well be. It could well be. But on those windows, there's no evidence of those windows because this is new, isn't it? So it must be the front desk. Oh, that must okay. be the front because yeah. uh, the well, windows have all gone. I don't know because it looks as though that door comes round and then this mm. jumps out. I'll tell you who would be able to tell you. That would be Margaret Callahan. She used to work in the front. That office. picture was yeah, taken yeah. by Jeff Baker. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff Baker. Yeah. If you remember the photographer. Yes, I do. He, yeah. came, he obviously transferred to Westway and was appointed chief photographer yeah, for yeah. many, many years yeah. until he retired. Well, whether it's the front office or not, I don't know. But I mean, it won't be on, on any other floor because there's a door there. Yeah. Now, what I did here is that's a shot from the inside. And what I've done is to reverse, I can't do quite describe it, invert it and reverse it. So yeah. although you're looking out, the, the wording is reversed yeah, so that you can yeah, yeah. see what it says. Now look at those newspapers. Yeah, the Essex yeah. Chronicle, the paper you must... Paper you must see and read. Ah. And yeah, well, 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 when I came here, we only, we only did the Herald. Did you? And the Chronicle. That's right, that's right. Well, the, the Chronicle was the big one. The, the Herald, that was the Tuesday. The Herald came out on a Tuesday. To catch the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think we did a Brentwood edition of that. Oh, and, really? And that, obviously. Really? But, uh, and um, when, when they employed these new readers, we'd just taken over the Colchester Gazette. That is the editor's office. And uh, right. what, look at the broom. Someone's sweeping. There's an empty bottle of whiskey or something or other. Yeah, and, yeah, and a, and a telephone. So very, very evocative. <laughs> Bless his heart. Yeah. 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 Well, well, where would that have been? Yeah. Is there one over there? On, on yes. Right yes. There are two chimneys. Well, if the fireplace is there, then that would be on the right hand side. Yeah. So this so is, as this we are is, looking, this is mean, the back of the office. As we're looking at this. The windows would have been here. So which window would it have been? Which window would have looked into there? The one up there on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right, I reckon. On the right? Yeah. You well, know, if I've got the fireplace in the right place. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. okay. That's, look, that's that piece of cable or, or, or copper pipe. Look, see it? I think Jeff Baker did a very good job. He did do a good some job. Some nostalgic. Well, pictures. if he hadn't got that on there, we wouldn't be any the wiser. 
would we? No. So I'm saying, yes, that is on the right hand side. That's okay. I mean, that, that's obviously a bookshelf which. which Editors probably, would have. Uh, yeah. That's then and now. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Would you like to read it, please? Or is that a bit of a mouth? What, the whole thing? Yeah, why not? Right. Well, I was You're a good reader. at English. I, I was a reader. Uh, I'll be quick, though. Please. Right. The Essex Chronicle was originally printed in a building that stood at the back of the Royal Oak in Tindall Street, Chelmsford. This was long before the present New London Road existed. Up to the time when the Royal Oak was renovated some years back, and the present handsome building erected there, a part of our original composing room was still in existence. About a century ago, the Essex Chronicle were moved to 98 High Street, Chelmsford, which I believe is the building we're looking at now, and where it has remained ever since. The yard, which then separated 97 and 98. The yard. Mm, okay. High Street from 2 and 3 Tendall Street was built over to afford factory room for the newspaper working. So matters stood until 1892 when we found it necessary to take over the premises in Tendall Street, then occupied by the late Alderman Driver. Now the proprietors of the Essex Chronicle own the whole of 97 and 98 High Street. So why are you smiling at that Well, point? because it means it's, it was the whole building. Yeah? I thought it was just that half. I thought it was just that half. Now that's why I wanted yeah. you to read yeah, that, because then, it's very revelatory. Well, they, they, they've specified 97 and, and 98. So we'll go check the numbers out in a minute. Uh, and 2 and 3 Tyndall Street, which is at the back. Right? So we'll check those out as well. A solid block from back to front in the centre of Chelmsford. Part of the front is leased by Mrs. Alfred Darby and Company, Frank Burrow FAI and Albert W. Caton, who carry on in it their extensive and growing practice as auctioneers and estate agents. The bulk of the entire block, consisting of two roomy basements and four floors above, is, however, required for the purpose of producing the Essex Chronicle and its associated papers, and for the large general printing business combined therewith. In the basements are the three gas engines, respectively of 45, 30 and 10 horsepower, with ample room and verge enough, in quotes, for them to work in. On the ground floor are the commercial offices and the newspaper rotary room, with its machine weighing nearly 40 tonnes, built on the solid while on the Tyndall Street and Shire Passage, sorry, while on the Tyndall Street and Shire Passage sides are paper storage rooms with their great rolls of paper and their floors specially made to carry them. On the first floor there are the editorial and reporting rooms, the smaller printing machines and the record rooms. The second floor carries the reading rooms, the news composing room and the stereotyping foundry. In the new composing room, the paper is made up and the battery of liner types stands there. At the top of the house, there are the general printing department with extensive machinery and plant and the warehouse and the file room. The file room contains a bound set of the Essex Chronicle from its establishment in 1764 down to the present day. As we be imagined, various alterations have been made from time to time to adapt the premises to their growing needs. Mr. W. B. Simmons of Springfield Road, Chelmsford. This is very grainy, it's very... Uh, 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 ...has just been doing something for me and we owe the... Yeah. We owe the We are the custodian, custodian, our custodian, custodian yeah. of the file room to Mr. Frank Ward of Springfield Hill Chelsea. The premises are, uh, are very compact. Every part is easy of access and our uh, money... 
many readers. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, carry on. And uh, many something or other, of which have been. Oh, here, right no, there. That's it. Anyway, whatever it is, for, yeah. for years. <laughs> good, good. Well, has that taken you back? Work in good health conditions. Has that taken you back a bit? Oh, and yeah, taught yeah, us yeah. a bit? Yeah, but this is back in the... In the uh, in Stone the, Age. 1800s, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, that, they wouldn't have been there. Well, it, you know, in the, the second part of this, it's uh, that's quite a bit later, I would say. Yeah, well, they take there it a back. few times, so I tell you. Yeah, because I had to walk right up then to the to the top floor. Um, to Where's the entrance? I know there was one. I think it was the, the floor below the top. Um, is that in, is the entrance in the alleyway to that? Yeah, it's right at the end. Yeah, right at the end of the alleyway. Yeah. So yeah, I, I walked up there a few times. To where? To do what? To the reading box. Okay. Yeah, but don't forget we're on the ground floor here, right? The reading box. I mean, there's no windows at the side, so but all those doors and everything weren't there. We'll check them out. Yeah. We'll check them out. Okay, yeah, I thought you would look at that and say, I've been yeah. climbing those.